Guys, what is going on? Back again with another Arbitrum ecosystem update. As usual, nothing in this video is financial advice, and everything I say is my opinion and my opinion alone. Uh, we got a couple of uh, topics here, uh, a couple of different things that happened over the weekend uh, and yesterday, uh, so let's jump right into it. Uh, the first one is about the Arbitrum Stable Treasury Endowment Program. Uh, we'll go ahead and read the tweet, and then we'll jump into the details. Uh, so Carl here says, looks like institutions are interested in the Arbitrum Stable Treasury Endowment Program. And he took he took a screenshot here of essentially securitized markets, uh, a distributor uh, essentially on behalf of BlackRock, as well as uh, Franklin Templeton, uh, submitted applications uh, to receive uh, essentially funding from the Arbitrum DAO. So for those of you who don't know, uh, STEP or uh, the Stable Treasury Endowment Program is essentially, um, and I'll read it verbatim here, a framework a framework aiming to support uh, the RWA ecosystem on Arbitrum by diversifying 35 million ARB from the Treasury into stable and liquid UST bills or money markets, or sorry, or money market instruments, earning a rate of return roughly equivalent to U.S. Treasuries or essentially stable ruled assets. Uh, so pretty exciting stuff. Um, very, I would say, like kind of big brain for the for the folks who aren't really into um, traditional uh, finance or DeFi, frankly. Um, I'm actually not that huge in traditional finance, so I kind of had to, uh, you know, reassess kind of what I was going to say before I even started the uh, this video here. Um, but it's pretty cool, uh, nonetheless, to see, uh, you know, institutions like uh, those representing BlackRock, as well as Franklin Templeton, essentially taking part in governance, right, of all things. Like, it's one thing to actually go on, go on chain to... Uh, uh, start investing into uh, crypto assets or other things like that but it's another to like literally essentially participate in governance um, and it makes sense uh, obviously the arbitrum treasury uh, is again one of the biggest in crypto uh, and in this case uh, you know the i think it was who was it i think it was uh let me make sure i think it was devonch actually here who uh, led the uh, stable treasury endowment program um, it's because of individuals like that that you know we are able to get uh, essentially institutions to come on chain and say, hey, you know what, like, we want to participate in this, we want to, you know, be part of, essentially, now they're now a part of the DAO, you know, for better or for worse on their end. Um, and they're, you know, they're contributing to the space. Um, obviously, of course, you know, it, it works in their favor, because they will be receiving uh, funds in this case, I guess, assuming their application does go through. Uh, but nonetheless, it's really, really cool to see these guys, uh, the institutions being part of governance. I think to me, that's like the that's like the biggest kind of call out here. Institutions are being part of governance. That's that's insane. <laughs> Absolutely insane. So uh, shout out to Carl for the tweet there uh, and look forward to seeing a step uh, officially uh, go live. All right. I put out a tweet here uh, earlier yesterday, I think it was. Uh, and I said, uh, if you're building something on Arbitrum within the following categories, uh, gaming, dev tooling, new, new protocol ideas, education, community, events and growth, uh, you may be eligible to apply for up to a $50,000 grant from this DAO-led grant program. Uh, and I pointed uh, to, and this is funny enough, another another DAO-led program, um, a pro a, essentially a grant program led by QuestBook. Now, they actually led a similar program to this a couple of months ago, uh, and it was actually, and they actually did it with a fourth of the budget. Uh, now they actually have a $4 million budget uh, as approved by the Arbitrum DAO because, you know, the last time we went so well. So if you are actually... Um, uh, you know, plan on deploying an Arbitrum or already are on, on Arbitrum and you're looking for some funding, uh, and you know, of course, you know, your project fits within this kind of scope that I mentioned here, uh, make sure to take a look and apply if it makes sense. Um, again, I, I'll always say that uh, DAO-led initiatives to me are definitely the coolest. Um, there is a little bit of criticism I think I've seen lately on the TL that the DAO is spending too much money. Um, to me, that's, I, frankly, I brought it up, but that's definitely a conversation for another day if you ask me. Um, but it's just funny because I remember in the beginning, people were saying that DAO isn't spending anything and now they're spending too much. So, you know, it may be one of those scenarios where, you know, it's impossible to get, you know, it's impossible to get it right every time. But uh, at the very least, uh, you know, hopefully this this funding does go to uh, builders who need the money uh, and are looking to build and, you know, essentially see their uh, ideas and protocols come to life on Arbitrum. Um, we have a tweet here today by DeFi Minty. Uh, this is a really cool one, um, and I'll, I'll get into it why. I'm not going to read the entire thing, but I'll read the TLDR of it. Uh, Minty says, I've always been a fan of Arbitrum, but there are three developments that make it stand out. Uh, one is the Layer 3 implementation. It's talking about uh, Arbitrum Orbit. Uh, two, he, he mentions expansion to uh, multi-VM through Stylus. Uh, and he also mentions chain clusters. Uh, so I'll, I'll stop right there, and I'll kind of uh, expand. But you can definitely read the rest of the tweet as he goes into more detail on why, they, uh, on why he's excited about them. So... 
Um, uh, you guys already know I'm obviously a, an enormous bull on all of this stuff. Um, I, I will say that, you know, I think the whole stylus multi VM thing um, was it's, it's kind of funny because stylus like like a, like nothing recently changed with stylus that makes it multi VM. It's just always been essentially it essentially makes Arbitrum multi VM because there's uh, obviously the EVM. Uh, and then, of course, a Wasm VM, so multi VM. Um, but it's just so funny how, like, I don't know. <laughs> I think the terminology used, being used before was EVM plus, uh, which kind of represented both VMs. But I guess now that I think about it, multi VM probably makes a lot more sense than EVM plus, because to a lot of people, uh, that's kind of just like a word they probably heard more so than EVM plus. So, you know, kind of like a marketing term at the end of the day. A lot, I mean, uh, half of what, what everything is is marketing uh, at the end of the day. Um, but the fact that it works is the most important thing, of course. Um, and that's why the layer three implementation, obviously amazing. Uh, literally, I think I put out a tweet earlier today saying that there's a 39 publicly announced orbit chains and a ton more in stealth. Um, I can't even obviously say, say which ones because they're in stealth. Um, and then the amount of teams uh, planning on using Stylus on orbit chains two is also going to be uh, really, really exciting. Um, but then more than that is chain clusters. So chain clusters is one thing that I've, I've mentioned um, a handful of times on the on this uh, series, I guess you, you could say, um, and essentially it allows for uh, cross chain communication uh, between orbit chains. Now that stuff is still in research, um, but even though it is still in like R and D, essentially, like it surprises me that no one talks about it like more, frankly, because uh, like we're we're talking about like cross chain tr uh, transfers, uh, you know, in, in in the ideal world. So like that that stuff to me, I think is going to be very very. Uh, it's very underrated right now, but I th and I think it's going to be uh, top of mind. I think as as uh, as the cycle plays out, um, Stylus and uh, Bold, of course, um, both of them will hopefully, assuming with a with an approved DAO vote, will be live on mainnet. Both Arbitrum one um, and I think Nova. Um, I mean, what like by by fall this year? Um, I, frankly, I think fall is actually even shooting it out way longer than it actually than it actually will take, uh, assuming it passes through the DAO. Um, so if you ask me, both of those, both of those developments are going to be insane alone, uh, chain clusters and anything else essentially, uh, that, that comes out is just icing on the cake. Uh, personally, um, I think everyone essentially that like, it's funny because I think like back when Arbitrum was first, uh, coming about, people were still trying to figure out how to scale Ethereum. Um, it seems like now, you know, there's so many different solutions you can choose from Arbitrum being one of the most mature that like. I think everyone feels pretty comfortable about scaling Ethereum uh, for the most part, but now it's more, okay, we've scaled Ethereum efficiently, uh, sorry, effectively. Uh, we have all these different solutions to scale it with, but how do we kind of tie them all back together, right? They're all technically on Ethereum, but none of them are composable with each other. So hopefully chain clusters is what solves that. Uh, and honestly, in a perfect world, chain clusters should work between uh, every, every uh, it chains regardless of the stack. So like I, I could see a world to me that would be cool where, where you have orbit chains interacting with even like OP stack chains or like ZK sync hyper chains, I think, right? Um, that to me is the is the perfect kind of uh, cross chain implementation. But nonetheless, um, shout out to Minty for kind of shouting this out, uh, putting this thread out there. Um, I think one of the few, one of the first threads I've seen talking about chain clusters and hopefully uh, won't be the last. All right, it's going to be a quick one. Uh, we have a tweet here by the Arbitrum Foundation. Uh, they said here that the Arbitrum Security Council election for Cohort 2 has officially concluded. Uh, and essentially here, the newly elected members for the Arbitrum Security Council, uh, which is uh, mainly, which is actually comprised of 12 people, um, is now Bartek, Fred, Zelik, uh, Sartora, Yoav, and Open Zeppelin. Um, so these are the, new, the six new uh, members of the uh, cohort um, out, of the, out of the 12. I will say one thing that's pretty cool is that uh, that I actually didn't realize until recently is that these three uh, are, are companies, literally, <laughs> literally companies. Um, and then these three are is, is Ethereum, uh, L2Beat and Arbitrum. Uh, so it's pretty funny how like you kind of you, you almost have like a perfect mix, I think, of a, of a, of a cohort, I guess you could say. Um, and I, this is also the first time it's only the second election, but I think it's also the first time they, that a company's. Uh, we're able to apply here as well. Um, so it makes sense that I guess, uh, you know, a couple of them got through here. But nonetheless, uh, shout outs to these guys. Uh, and yeah, I'm looking forward to, uh, I don't know, see you guys, uh, you know, council the security, security the council. I know, I'm terrible. <laughs> Let's keep moving.
All right, we have a tweet here by the Arbiter Foundation again. Uh, they say, get ready, bug, uh, bug bounty hunters. Uh, the bold audit competition is here. Starting May 10th, we're hosting a 17-day competition with $300,000 in prizes. Help audit bold and win your share of the pie. So um, as it says here, uh, bold is essentially going uh, undergoing an audit competition. Uh, for those of you who don't know, bold is essentially permissionless validation for Arbitrum chains. Um, this is essentially going to be going to bring Arbitrum one uh, in particular one step closer to being uh, stage two. Uh, that gets the holy grail of uh, a of, of Ethereum layer, layer two decentralization, um, and most likely, if you ask me, most likely going to be the first protocol to do it. Uh, bold is actually scheduled, as I said. Uh, to hit mainnet, uh, to be, I should say, ready for mainnet um, later this year. Um, so let's see. Uh, yeah, frankly, you know, again, I, to, to me, like audit competitions are, are, are pretty dope uh, and definitely uh, really key, actually, uh, to making sure like core infrastructure like this is actually secure. Uh, getting audits internally is one thing, but opening, opening it up to the community and allowing them to essentially try to break it uh, is definitely another way to go about, um, you know, making sure I guess your infrastructure is uh, rock solid. So shout out to the foundation for uh, doing that. All right, here we have a tweet by Index Co-op or Index Coop. Uh, they say DPI and MVI are coming to Arbitrum uh, and they just, uh, you can bridge now. Uh, this is, it's kind of funny because I, I think they might've actually announced this a little while ago. Um, DPI and MVI, if I remember, so DPI is essentially like kind of like an index token for DeFi protocols, and oh, and MVI is, is a uh, token that is like an index for, uh, like it's supposed to be metaverse uh, tokens, but that's what, that's what that's what MV stands for. But I feel like it's also like different NFT tokens, like different uh, uh, NFTs as well. And nonetheless, it's still pretty cool. Uh, it's coming to Arbitrum. Uh, I'm not sure if, there, if this is already actually on, let me click on this. I'm not sure if this is already on uh, different chains. Uh, nonetheless, it, it'll be available on Arbitrum. <laughs> we don't need to get into that in the video. But nonetheless, shout out to Index Co-op for uh, bridging their, uh, their the, the indexes over to Arbitrum. Um, I will say like, I feel like indexes never really took off in crypto. Um, I mean, they had their moment for a little bit, a couple of cycles ago, two, a cycle or two ago. Um, but I feel like it never really took off. And uh, I don't know. I, I think there's a world where it does, but it, it needs to be marketed correctly. And in my opinion, it may they may do better, actually, um, in protocols like, uh, sorry, um, in like, you know, normie facing wallets, uh, like Coinbase wallet, like Robinhood wallet. Uh, like those essentially where, you know, like the average person just kind of doesn't know what to buy and they just want to kind of expose themselves, right? And they didn't, maybe they don't want to do the research either, right? Which, you know, obviously we, we don't want to encourage that, but, you know, uh, if you're not going to do the research, you're not going to do any of that stuff, then maybe one of these things is the best for you to get, not financial advice. Um, so look, looking forward to into this being available on Arbitrum. Uh, Shouts to Index for making the leap. And I think I'm going to end it off here. Uh, did I have something else here? No, that was it. Yeah, so this is the, I'm going to end it off here. Uh, I tweeted out here the other day, Hieroglyphs is off to an incredible start with multiple blocks having been proposed by participating validators. Uh, looking forward to user comprehension getting higher and the team implementing a way for users to get involved beyond running their own validator. Uh, so Hieroglyphs is a doozy. Um, this is one thing that I've been wanting to make a video on for a little bit. Uh, I'm holding off just still, just because just I want to make sure I understand it completely before creating a video. Um, but I, I am currently, I do run my own validator and I am uh, trying to participate in the Hieroglyph protocol. So once I like, you know, uh, I'm essentially uh, getting badges from the Hieroglyph protocol, which is uh, essentially a token that you can get from participating, um, then I, I probably make the video uh, because frankly, I didn't realize that I was actually doing it wrong for the first two, three days. <laughs> and I realized it like yesterday. And I'm like, oh my God, this entire time I thought I was collecting badges and then I haven't been getting anything. So we'll see what happens. Um, it's, it's funny because like this is the kind of stuff that like got me interested in the crypto in the first place uh, you know like the the technical stuff that like you kind of have to figure out and kind of collaborate with people to uh, understand like how to do what and what makes the most sense um, this is um, definitely on another level though for sure uh, like it's called hieroglyphs for a reason because the entire thing might as well be hieroglyphs to most people but um, if you take the time to understand it and if you've run your own validator before, it's actually pretty straightforward, um, to be honest with you. But yeah, if you're like just someone trying to speculate, buy the NFT and figure out what's going on, then it's probably going to be a little bit hard. I'm not going to lie. So hopefully a video uh, will come out soon on that. 
Um, I, I, yeah, like I said, I just want to make sure I know what I'm talking about before actually releasing it. But that guys, that being said, I appreciate everyone for watching. That was a long one. Um, uh, but yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. All right. Peace.